So in this week's video, I wanna talk about a big problem with wide angle lenses and how you can overcome it. So we're gonna go into the field, I'll show you some footage and I'll come back and we'll look at some photos. Fantastic to see you all again. So we are here for a sunrise at Kynance Cove and it's a sunset location. Great. Well, we'll see what happens. Oh my gosh, the light over there. Let me show you. It's looking pretty good. Okay, so James and I went the wrong way. <laughs> so the epic sunset, sunrise even, is, is epic, but we aren't anywhere near where we need to be, are we, James? Well, we might get there in time for sunset. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll be good then. Okay, we're getting there now. Still gonna go a bit further, but it's looking pretty good for about 15 minutes too late because we went the wrong way for some stupid reason. Pretty much my fault. Okay, made it just. Um, it's looking pretty good. I'll show you through my camera. We have Cannons Cove, there, sunrise there, hopefully light hitting here. The best thing is for once I might get a better quality photo than Mass, because what have you done Mass? Uh, yeah, I forgot my camera in the car. <laughs> <laughs> so whilst we wait for the sun to come over here and cast some light on these amazing rock formations, I'll just tell you a little bit about my composition. It's fairly simple, to be honest. Um, there's this little bit of rock on the left here. This is the bit that I don't like so much, but I can darken that down. And then I've got the headland here with some rocks that are going to catch some nice light, I think. Obviously, there's going to be some sunlight here hitting the side of these. And then this is quite nice. It's just coming in through here. I've just made sure I've got a separation between this bit and this bit. And then I like this bit of rock coming over here. It's meant to be low tide around the time we arrived, but as you can see, well, you don't know what low tide looks like, but it's meant to be further out. So I think it's not a very low, low tide because we're going to walk down here later, but there's a chance, a big chance, very real chance that we will get stuck. So whilst I'm waiting for the light to come on this bit here and all these um, sea cliffs, which should be epic, the light on the clouds, you can see above me there, is amazing. So I've just taken a sort of vertical shot with those, which I think looks really good. The longer lens should be good. Okay, the sun's out now and it looks so, so <laughs> epic. Oh my word, the difference it makes when you've got sunlight on the scene, but also these amazing clouds over here, it's just incredible. I'll just show you on here. The clouds up here just look absolutely fantastic. So I'm just being a little bit careful about shutter speed for this. I want about a second, it's a little bit further away. So it's moving less quickly because I'm further away than the from the waves. So. I'll probably shoot it at a faster speed when we get a bit more light, but at the moment I'm shooting around about one second. There's also some nice waves breaking there, but I don't think we'll get those in the shot. It's a shame this bit of ground just down here isn't a little bit more interesting rocks. That would have been good. So we've got a little bit of sunlight now. It's not super strong. Um, it's just behind the cloud. James has gone down there to get a slightly different shot. Um, it's just so cool here. Unfortunately, you can't fly your drone here because it's near an airport, um, but safety is more important than getting a footage. 
but it's quite annoying because it would have been amazing. So it's hopefully the sun will just, just coming out a little bit more now. In fact, it's getting stronger. Let's go back. Oh, the sun's so much better now. It's super strong. I've changed my composition a little bit. I've decided I'm not going to get the edge of these stacks. I'm just going to cut this one off here because I want to get the sun in my shot because there's a really nice effect coming through there. So I've taken that. It looks pretty good. There's also a nice light on this though. So I'll probably take a few different compositions. Um, thinking about my foreground because it is going to be in my shot. So I've just got to be a little bit careful about that. Um, and then I'm taking I'm focus stacking, but there's not a huge amount of focus stacking required, but I'm really thinking about the shutter speed required for these waves here and taking it at fast shutter speed and sort of one second, which I think will work really well. James is still down there getting that shot through there, which I think looks pretty epic. So I might go down, I might take this and then I might head down there because I think I've got what I need. So just about made it for the light. It was a pretty amazing morning. We've got some more footage to show you in a minute, but I just want to talk about these images and a mistake that I still make with my wide angle lens when I, certainly when I'm shooting between sort of 14 and sort of 20 millimeters on my wide angle lens. And I love this lens. It's fantastic. You can put filters on it. Um, it's just so, so simple to, to use. But there's a big mistake that you can make. So if we go and look at the first photo that I took, which was this one here, then you see that it's fairly well balanced. I'm shooting at 14 millimeters and I just left a little bit of a gap there. I've got these, all these islands in and it's just before sunrise. This I've got these beautiful hues up there. They're reflected in the water. It looks really good. There's starting to be a little bit of dead space over here, but I don't think it's too much. I think it works reasonably well. But soon as I moved to when the sun was up, I wanted to move my um, camera to the left hand side a little bit. But when I did that, you've got to remember that you've got quite a wide field of view with a, a lens like this. So it's not only just going wider left and right, but obviously it's shooting more down towards your feet and more up to the sky. And because it was boring sky, I pointed my camera down a little bit because I, I thought it'd be better to have the foreground. But the problem with this image is, you know, the sky's great, you know, all, all this is, is, is amazing. I don't think it really matters that I've cut that off, but you could argue that that is a problem. But this is all dead space and it's, it's boring foreground. It's not that interesting. So it becomes a big part of the image that's not super interesting. And it's something you've got to think about all the time with a wide angle lens. You've got more in the frame, so you've got more to compose. And it's the biggest mistake, certainly that I used to make um, when I was starting and still make now. Now you can crop this, so we could go to a crop of that and make it a bit of a pano. So I get rid of that and that works better. I've got a nice line that goes around there. I've not got too much dead space, but it's a shame because it would have been nice as just a, you know, a, a four by three or a four by five. So, you can make it into a pano or we could crop it that way and just have a little bit of the glow from, from the sun there and have a vertical shot. But there are ways that you can get over that. Um, so in this particular shot, I'll come back to it in a minute and how we could have maybe improved that. But if I show you some other shots that are shot similarly with wide angle lenses, this is 20 millimeters. And this is quite similar to that shot that I just showed you. So because we've got this line that goes all the way through this foreground, which is fairly dull, but this line makes it, it creates some interest in it. It creates this dead space and turns it into something interesting. Um, there's also, you know, other ways you can do that. So here's another super wide angle shot. This is 16 millimeters and I've got a big area of grass here, but I've got this line through it. And actually the grass is quite interesting. It's got texture in it and it looks pretty good. This one here, um, again, 14 millimeters, but I've got something that's going really interesting through the foreground and it's all about the foreground this. So that works really well. Um, and also in a vertical orientation, it's better to do that because you, 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 you're actually focusing quite often on the sky or the foreground. But I used to make mistakes like this. So this was at Mam Tor near where I live. And you can see that, um, you know, the interest is just in this sort of letterbox area here. This is fairly boring. I've not concentrated on some interesting foreground. And if we go back to the shot that I took here, then 
I think if there was some rocks here um, or something in this area that was sort of leading your eye into the image and something that was a little bit more interesting. The other way I could have got around this is I could have gone lower maybe. So if it had gone lower, I could have concentrated more on these rocks here, the textures of these rocks, how they were catching the light. Or I could have gone to the right a little bit. The problem we're going to the right in this particular scene is there's about a 50 foot drop. So I don't want to do that. Um, so it's something that to think about all the time when you've got a wide angle lens, you've got a bigger field of view, you've got more elements in the scene to compose. And quite often if you move left and right or up and down, then you're introducing big areas like this into your scene because um, you know, when you're zoomed in, if I, if I was, at, um, so say I zoomed into, let's go to something like this, which might be about 24 mil, then I've got a lot more room for maneuver in terms of what I include because I'm a narrower field of view. So I can be a little bit more selective about what I include in the foreground, or whether I just include the rocks there. But when you go wide, you've got more to include. Anyway, I thought that'd be useful. It's something to think about next time you're out with your wide angle lens. And let's get back to the scene where I drop down to the shore and I get the most amazing waves. So I have um, got what I need up there, I think. The, the early light was good on the foreground. It's going a little bit now. It's actually gonna go in some cloud, unfortunately. So I'm probably gonna miss what I wanna get down here. But I wanna go a little bit lower because there's some really nice waves that are sort of intersecting down here. So I want to see if I can get those and yeah, just see what else I can get lower down with these amazing waves that are going to be backlit. So it's going to be, it's going to be pretty good. Just a shame there's a little bit of a cloud just there. You can see the sun going into it now. Oh, this is good. So I've got my longer lens on my 24 to 200 actually, and I'm just shooting it around about 140 millimeters. And the waves are just coming up here with the beams coming through. The houses in the background look so, so epic. So I'm just waiting for one of the waves that just came then just to come and grow in the photos, but it doesn't get better than this. This is, this is so good. I've contemplated going lower, but I can't get lower here. Um, I may be able to get just a little bit lower if I just crouch down a bit. But the lower I go, the more I can compress the waves and, and reduce this mid-ground area here, which is a little bit boring, but it's pretty good here. I could get down onto the beach, but then I might not get the same phenomenon. I'll try. Okay, so I've got my um, 24 to 200 millimeter lens and I'm doing some backlit waves here. So you can see that I'm just shooting these waves as they come through. They're just absolutely amazing. I've got really low down um, next to a big rock, actually. You can probably hear the echo of it. And um, by getting low down, it means that I can just compress everything and it just looks fantastic just coming through here with these houses in the background. Really like it. I might just try some foreground but I'm not sure it'll work um, I think it's just all about the long lens stuff the key thing here is that I'm shooting at a fast shutter speed so I'm shooting at about one two thousand five hundredth of a second because I just want to capture those little water droplets I might do some longer exposures but I feel like this just needs those fast shutter speeds it does look epic Oh, there's something that is just so, I don't know, it's just addictive shooting waves. 
Um, so I've just been shooting through there as you saw those photos and wow, that was amazing. Um, the waves aren't that big actually, they're probably only one and a bit meters, um, but get low and you can make them look amazing. Uh, just backlit is all you need and because there's not a lot of sediment here I just don't think I think it's very clean the water so you get that really nice sort of crystal clear blue color the, the, the key thing is not worry about taking lots of photos um, because you it's all about wave photography just capturing that sort of character in the wave you know woodland photography is finding the character in the woodland and seascape photography, I feel, is like finding the character within the waves and that character will merge as you just take um, different shutter speeds because things are just changing all the time. So that's been really enjoyable. I'm just going to have a look around now. I might just try and find some little close intimate scene. Um, the sun is still going to be out for quite a long time, so I just need to find some shade, get some nice sort of reflected light. I think it'll be pretty good. Um, there's lots of cliffs here with like that are reflecting the light into shadow areas so I think it'd be quite nice right don't stop in that pool again I think it's time for a jelly baby as you can see there is an epic little funnel for the water here um, just to come through and then I've just sort of got a composition with the what are they called islands in the background and um, yeah, there's sea stacks in the background. I think it looks quite good. I'm shooting directly into the sun. It's the most dynamic range I think I've ever shot in any composition ever, but it looks really, really good. So I'll talk about the results back in the studio. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Those photos I just got with the long lens were really, really good. I was really pleased with them. It was quite difficult conditions to shoot in, but the color of the waves contrasting with the orange light just looks so good. And also remember that tip on the wide angle lens. And if you're looking to get a wide angle lens like this, the 14 to 30 Nikon lens, then make sure you check out this week's sponsor. And that is MPB. So whether you want to buy, sell or trade your equipment, MPB is a great place to do that. It's a worldwide platform and if I want to go and have a look for one of these, I can type in here 14 to 30 millimeter Nikon and I can then go and see all the different Nikons, what condition they're in and you can get a discount basically on, on a lens that's just like new. And it comes with a six month warranty as well. So make sure you check out MPB if you want to sell your gear or buy some used gear. Thanks ever so much for watching this week's video. And until next Sunday, bye.